Hey y'all, welcome back to Restless to Quote Link Kitchen. Y'all know that I am all about quick and easy dinners, right? I mean, really, if you can get something done in 30 minutes, that's just perfect. And you know I'm all about Tex-Mex. Well, today's recipe combines something super quick with my favorite Tex-Mex, and it is amazing. I'll show you. This is so easy. It's one of the easiest 30 minute dinners that I do. And actually, probably takes a little bit less than 30 minutes. What we're gonna need is two cans of Rotel, or if you can't find Rotel, then any um, diced tomatoes and green chilies are fine. You need two cans or 20 ounces. And then, <clears throat> normally I put green peppers in this, but I didn't have any green pepper this time, so I did notice that I had a couple of cans of diced green chilies, so I'm using those. You can use bell peppers, green chilies, poblano pepper, um, some kind of combination. It's fine. I'm telling you, this recipe is so easy. Um, it takes all kinds of variations. It's just one of those things that if you don't have something, use something else, okay? You're gonna need two rolls of crescent dough sheets or two rolls of crescent rolls. Either way, the dough sheets are kind of easier because you don't have to worry about them falling apart, but the crescent rolls work too. And then a package of taco, taco seasoning. And you need a pound of cheese. Now, the recipe on the blog calls for a pound of mozzarella cheese, but I didn't have a whole pound of mozzarella cheese, so I'm using a combination of pepper jack, mozzarella, and cheddar. I'm telling you, this recipe is literally that easy. Um, you can easily make substitutions and do fine. And then, again, my recipe calls for two pounds of ground beef, and I think I have maybe, let's see, I might have a pound and a half, I guess we'll see. Um, I have, oh, actually I do have two pounds, so get me. Okay, and that's it, that's all that goes in there, all right? Normally I would do this on the, in the skillet on the stove, but I don't have um, good, a good way to video there, so I do this in my multi-cooker, but you would probably do this on the stove. So I'm gonna turn the stove top onto high, and then um, I'm, what I'm gonna do is brown the meat. And while I'm waiting for this to heat up, I'm going to go ahead and shred the cheese, and I'll be right back. Okay, I think we're, heat, we're heated pet up to temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the ground beef in. And this is 93% lean ground beef. Um, you could, I like to use lean ground beef because then I don't have to drain fat and all the other stuff. But you can use whatever kind of ground beef you usually get. It's just if it's very fatty, you wanna drain that off. Now, there's no need to put um, salt or anything on this because we're going to add the taco seasoning and I think for me there's going to be plenty of salt in there but if you want to salt the ground beef a little bit while you're cooking it that's fine too. Um, I just don't like a lot of salt. I'm very sensitive to the saltiness so I usually don't add it if I'm adding other seasoning that has salt in it. And we all know that this cooker does not cook the meat as quickly as it being on the stove. So um, I'm not gonna make you watch this painful process and I will uh, be back in a little bit. All right, this is pretty much cooked and um, you can break the meat up as it's cooking. It'll work out a lot better than having great big chunks in there. But once the meat is all cooked, you wanna go ahead and add your taco seasoning. You can get it open, which apparently I'm having a problem doing. And 
you want to add the Rotel tomatoes, and that would be two cans, and then the uh, chilies, because I didn't have bell pepper. Now, the recipe does say bell pepper, and if you're using bell pepper, you're going to want to put that in with the meat so that it can cook all of the way. But since we're not using that, um, I just need to put it in here. Now, once we have the Rotel tomatoes and the chilies and the meat all, and the taco seasoning all mixed together, we're going to let that simmer for about 10 minutes just so the meat can absorb the flavors. While that's going on, we're going to spray a 13 by 9 inch casserole dish with nonstick spray. And then, and then um, I'm going to open up the first package of crescent rolls. and unroll it. And I'm gonna unroll the dough right into the crescent roll dough is about 13 by nine inch, uh, 13 by nine inches. So you can just unroll it right into your pan and just kind of bring it up to the edges. And if you have a little hole in it, just press it out with that. So the meat has simmered for its 10 minutes, and I tasted it a minute ago, and I didn't feel like it had enough uh, taco flavor for some reason. Usually it does. But I'm adding a second packet of taco seasoning to it, and I'm going to stir that in. I'm not going to simmer it any longer, but I just wanted a little extra taco flavor. It just didn't seem like it had that much. So always taste. Just because a recipe says, um, one thing doesn't mean that you can't put more into your own taste. That's so much better. All right. And we're going to use a slotted spoon, or in this case, a slotted um, spatula to put the meat right on top of the crescent roll dough. that off because we don't need it anymore and just we're just going to put a thick layer of this meat right on top um, we don't want to make it too juicy so that's why we're using a slotted spoon to get it out you don't want all of the juices I will say however that when there's the meat is all in here and there's uh, juice left in the pan I like to save that and kind of use it as a base for soup or add it to soups and stews because it sure got a lot of flavor and I don't like to waste flavor. Now we've got a thick layer of taco meat on top of the crescent roll dough and one thing that I like to do is I like to have seasoned ground beef cooked and in the freezer so that when if I want to make something like this I can do it even quicker because all I have to do is thaw out the meat and it's right there or I can like if I know I'm going to do it I can put it in the um, refrigerator the night before and it can thaw out in the fridge all night and then it's ready to use. Save time by thinking ahead and planning for more than one meal at a time and that's just smart because none of us has so much time that we don't need to save a little, right? Now the cheese goes on top of that. And I like to do a good thick layer of cheese. And I'm going to hold some out because I like to sprinkle a little bit of cheese on the top of the top crust. Okay, we're going to take that second sheet of crescent oil and we're going to roll it right out on top like we did before try not to stretch it out too much because it's 
going to be just about the right size. And now I'm going to sprinkle some cheese on the top, just like that. And I'm going to put it in a 375 oven for about 20 minutes. Oh, one more thing. If you don't want to use a crescent roll dough or you don't have any and you still want to make this, <clears throat> you can do this with biscuit dough. You can do it with a uh, pie crust. This is really a versatile recipe, so keep that in mind. Now, I'm just about to get that out of the oven, but before I do, I want to chop up some cilantro and try not to chop my fingers while I'm doing it. And because um, I just like the fresh taste of cilantro sprinkled on top. And it looks pretty. It keeps it from being just all brown or all tan or whatever. All one color. I don't usually worry too much about chopping this up tiny or mincing it. But uh, just give it a nice chop so that it's ready to go right on top when it comes out of the oven. And it sounds like it's ready to come out of the oven. Y'all, yeah, this smells so unbelievably good. And it looks fabulous. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle my cilantro over the top. And I'm not going to cut it just yet. I'm going to let it set for just a few minutes to give it a chance to kind of cool off just a little bit and for the different layers to kind of come together. But um, probably five or ten minutes is, is just about right for that. So I'll see you in five or ten minutes. Well, it's cooled down for a few minutes. Not enough to get actually cold, but enough to um, for the cheese to kind of solidify so it's not, you know, everything's falling apart when you cut into it. Let's see what we've got here. I'm just going to cut right through this like this. Like this. Think of this as kind of a Tex-Mex shepherd's pie or a pot pie. But if I bring this up, can you see that cheese? So much cheese. Everything's kind of falling. And I'm going to put that right on the plate. And trust me, I'm not going to leave any of my stuff that belongs with my uh, taco crescent bake piece. I'm not gonna leave any of that in there because it's all mine. All right. Put this to the side. And because, as my kids say, I'm a little extra, I'm going to add just a touch of salsa. and a little sour cream. Check it out. How good does that look? You know, it just does not get better than this. It is so good. The cheese is really gooey. The meat is really spicy. Well, not like too, too spicy, but you know, just right for me. And the dough on the top is um, flaky and buttery just so good mm. you've got to try this it's quick and easy tex-mex you can assemble a lot of it ahead you can freeze it this is literally the perfect weeknight dinner for busy families my family's busy i know you are too you've got to try this you've got to try a bite of this it is so good. I wish I could, whoops, I wish I could get it through the camera, but I can't, but mm, so good, meaty and delicious. Okay, if your family loves Tex-Mex as much as mine does, you need to try this soon, okay? All right, remember the nutrition information and more tips and tricks are over on the blog, so be sure to um, head over there to take a look at everything. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment below, a nice one please, and um, don't forget to subscribe, okay? I love y'all, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.